Okay, welcome back again to the Jessica and Kristen show. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, ratings are soaring. <laughs> they saw our faces and they were like, eh, let's just skip this one. Oh, next. No, but seriously, welcome back. Um, we find it an honor to, to come in front of you, um, two moms who really don't know what we're doing, um, two women's ministers who really don't know what we're doing, but we fully trust in the Holy Spirit to lead us. If you could hear our stories about how that is really true, mm -hmm. you would chuckle and maybe be on the search for new women's ministers. I'm not <laughs> sure. But um, I want to come to you today, and we've, we've hit some good topics um, and I hope these are being these are helpful. We would love feedback from from women who see these. Uh, we'd love to talk to you about um, questions you have, concerns you have, just things you're going through with your mm -hmm. with your children. Um, we're available and we'd love to help if we can, um, or point you to somebody who can. Yeah, or resources. Yes. So when when somebody has a marriage problem. Um, they might get a book on marriage, or if they have um, issues with low self-esteem, they may go find a book about low self-esteem. Um, if a parent, bam, right in here, if a parent is having trouble or concerns that their child is dabbling in drugs or alcohol, then we go get a book about drugs and alcohol and addiction. Um, because we need to know what the indicators are, the signs, mm -hmm. and, and solutions. Um, if we need help in a situation, we seek professionals, we seek assistance, right? Um, we become aware of the fact that, that we need help in an area when presenting problems begin to expose themselves. Mm -hmm. For instance, a headache we seek a neurologist. Um, you know, you get the picture. Um, for emotional issues, we might seek a counselor. Um, I have a friend who is a counselor and, and he has told me of times when he sits across from a, um, a patient of his and he's listening to them tell what their problems are and, and he, he, he says he just sits back because he can begin to figure out um, with their descriptions, what their problem is, but he continues to listen compassionately at their presenting problems. What they think is actually the problem is not really the problem. Um, so he's, as he told me that, I began to see myself, um, my story in, in what he had just shared with me. So let me explain. Um, I am a parent of a teenager size dun, all across dun, dun. the world. <gasps> oh no. Um, I have always heard that the teenage years are tough. Mm -hmm. I thought, no, my little boy is sweet. We have a great relationship. He's mm -hmm. kind. He's gentle. I didn't believe, you know, the stories. And then all of a sudden, one day, about a year or so ago, it happened. <laughs> Devin left and this green monster came in <laughs> and um, I, I had heard that this would happen so now I am a believer. <laughs> I mean teenage years are tough, male and female, I'm sure. Mm. Um, so I was caught off guard a little bit um, and I just was, began to take it in stride like I do, the changes in Devon, the, the mood swings, um, the crackling, growling voice, the, the changing voice. Mm -hmm. He began to pull back from mom. Mm -hmm. um, I had read Dr. Dobson's, doc, Dr. James Dobson um, book. I'm not even sure the, the title of it right now, but he had talk, talked about how um, teenage boys will pull back from their mother. Their, their caretaker, they're, they're pulling back because they're now navigating um, adulthood, manhood. Mm -hmm. And as moms, we're supposed to let them push back a little bit, go from hugs to maybe high fives, you know, give them some space. And so I began to do that. I was okay with that. However, at one point, I did begin to get a little concerned. Um, he was hibernating in his room a little more. He was withdrawn emotionally, physically, and spiritually. 
and other presenting problems began to surface. Mm. So what did I do as mom? I called Dr. Google. <laughs> Dr. Google search. <laughs> And so did you know that there are actual websites designed to teach children how to purchase and hide phones from their moms mm. or, and dads, parents, how to smuggle drugs in, how to keep them hidden, whole websites, how to um, sneak out of your house while your parents are asleep. You can look this up. Wow. How to sneak people in while your parents are asleep. Well, okay, so a whole new world is opened up to me as I got online and began to search the presenting problems between my son and I, his, his personality changes. And so I found these how to trick your parent websites and I used reverse <laughs> um, speculation on them. Um, so these how to showed me how he was. Okay. And so let me give you some, some tips here. We cannot go into this naive right. thinking, don't think like maybe I did and think, not Johnny, <laughs> not little such and such, right. he's too good. Well, that's gonna get you in a lot of trouble and it's gonna allow your kid to have a lot of free time and, and a, well, a lot of fun. Um, I want to stop you for just a yes, minute. Yes, please do. I know we talked in another episode about privacy, and I feel like it's important right here to just go into all of the parents who maybe listened to that episode and said, I will not invade my child's mm. privacy. Right. Um, if you as a mom knew that someone was after your child, would you stand back? and just let it all unfold and hope for the best? Mm -mm. Or would you intervene? Definitely. I feel like most moms would intervene. Oh, yeah. A lot of times we can't afford the consequences if we don't look into things. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that, fentanyl is a one-time oh. use, mm -hmm. you're dead. Drunk driving, one-time use, you're dead. Mm -hmm. Good. And so I just wanna point out there are children who ultimately do tell you the truth in all times. Sure. There are. Sure. Um, but I do think it's important as parents to make sure that we're not ignorant and that we look into things because we can stop the enemy from his plan of destruction with our children. So I just wanted to point that out because I'm sure we will get some some who say I never look in, some who say I always do. I think there's a middle, uh, that, a middle ground. Yes, and you have to find that. That's discernment. That's ask the Holy Spirit, where can, where can I move in and be effective in my child's life? Right. And, and where am I invaded? And where am I going to begin to push him away from me? Because right. we don't That's want good. that. Right. But yes, um, the devil prowls around like a lion looking for those he, who he may devour and he is just as happy devouring yours as he is devouring mine. He is mm -hmm. just as happy devouring the church as the unchurched. Right. Um, so we have to get involved. If you suspect that there's something going on with your um, child, uh, get involved. Even if you don't suspect it, just begin to educate yourself. Mm -hmm. As Barney Fife says, nip it in the bud. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to remind you that you're, um, you're not your kid's friend. You're not your kid's best friend at this stage in life, the formative, um, formative years in their life. We are their parents. We are to guide them and protect them, to mold and shape them. Um, we are to train them in the way they are to go. Right. And as they grow old, they will not depart from that. That mm -hmm. is our hope. That is what we hang on to. Mm -hmm. And so that, if that, mean, that means we are to walk it out in front of them as well as instruct them yeah. verbally. Um, I want to encourage you to know who your kids' friends are. Know who their friends list is. Know the... Again, it's, it's touchy. Know the home life of, of your kids' friends. What are you sending your child into um, if they spend the night? Personally, my child very rarely spends the night out. Mm -hmm. um, I just like him home. I like to know he's safe at home. Um, 
watch for personality changes in your child. Um, look for grades dropping. Look for interests that they used to have that are now, they're not interested. Um, get them involved. Mm -hmm. Sit with your children. Have meals together. I know it can't happen every night, but several times a week have meals together go on trips together car rides together right. um, teach them to serve um, and again touchy situation check backpacks check, check book bags check shoes and this is that that uh, website how to trick your parents mm -hmm. check above the ceiling fan they can hide things in the ceiling fan. They can put things at the back of the drawer and tape it. They can make a faux drawer. They can put it up under the drawer. They can put it in their shoes. They can hang it in pockets. I know this one for a fact. In pockets, in a jacket, in the back, winter jackets that you don't touch. Check their pockets. <laughs> I mean, you just, you just don't think you have to do these things. But if you want to stay on top of it, you have to do these things mm -hmm. these days. So another flag. Another really bad thing is vape manufacturers um, make them really small. They can hide them in their bras, in their underwear, in their shoes, mm -hmm. pockets, backpacks. Um, pot is more condensed and more um, or, or e less detectable. Mm -hmm. They have smells that aren't don't smell like the normal pot. Wow. Um, drugs can look like candy. Um, and you don't want to hear these things, but I've heard from, from, youth, from a youth pastor um, that kids create a, um, a network within their friends. If they want to do drugs, they will create a network of, and their friends will cover for them. Mm -hmm. They will hide things for them. Um, you just have to be aware of that. It's scary. It's um, really sad. Um, as parents, the world system, the, the whole prince of the air can seem really formidable, um, a foe that can't be, can't be beaten. Right. Um, and it seems like the world is, and our kids are two and three steps ahead of us. So they, we have to stay on top mm -hmm. of what our kids are being presented with mm -hmm. um, at church, at school at extracurricular activities. Mm -hmm. We just need to stay on top of it. So that will lead me to my next point. Um, as I began to uncover these things in my own home, um, I admit to you, I took it personally. Mm -hmm. I got angry. I got angry at the situation, at, at right. that things had snuck into my house. I became angry at my son. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I had to seek some counsel from friends to, for them to just walk me through this. It's not right. a time for me to let my emotions take over. It is a time for me to stand firm in my faith, in my belief, mm -hmm. and in my parenting ability to, to maintain um, relationship with Devin. Yeah. It can be hard. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, so... I, that perfect world, I think sometimes we, we, we spend so much time, you, you alluded to this in our last video, we spend so much time painting a picture, a beautiful picture of our perfect home, mm -hmm. our um, Instagram perfect pictures of our families and our, our homes. And just to be real honest with you, that type home does not exist. Right. I remember one time you telling me, I love how Bryson stands up front and worship. And I was like, Kristen, I make him. <laughs> do you remember that? I do. I was like, I think, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I'm like, no, you don't get an option. You're a worshiper. I've been claiming that over you right. since you were little. Uh, but I do think a lot of times people don't know the backstory. Sure. They so don't it's know the easy backstory. to assume, oh gosh, her son so involved in worship. I, know. I love that about him. <laughs> <laughs> Little does she know in the way to church in the mornings. I'm like, all right, look, you got two places you can be, the bathroom or worship. That's it. So yeah. I can't go to the bathroom, but I will find you during worship. Well, I've even gone so far as to say you go to the bathroom before and you don't go during. <laughs> during. Yeah. Because he will. You're right. They will. Yes. They'll all find a way. Yeah. So I don't want to 
we don't want to tell you all this stuff to, to make you depressed and think, right. oh gosh, what are we getting into? Or, or how are we getting out of this? But really, as important to me as making you aware of what our children may or may not be hiding from us and things that they may or may not be dealing with, the pressures and the um, peer pressures mm -hmm. to do these things, I want to remind you that we are all a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Yeah. <laughs> um, sure, I'm angry. Um, sure, I, I, I want to wring his neck and make him do things, but I cannot in my flesh be angry and push my son away. Right. He needs me now maybe more than he ever has before. Mm -hmm. um, my son is adopted, um, and I don't know things from his past that he has dealt with um, if he doesn't share them with me. Um, he is being raised by a single mom, mm -hmm. and on top of being 16 and trying to figure out who he is and to navigate into manhood, in a world that wants to emasculate him and and discourage him and confuse him and enable and entitle him all at the same time and also to lie about his God, he needs me. Mm -hmm. Our kids need us. They need that plumb line, yeah. um, the, the consequences. They need us to, to remain in their lives and not take it personally. Right. It's not a... It's not a time to step back and say, "Well, it's too late. This is just I've done all I can this do. Is, this is what it is." Um, I remember some people in school that their parents kind of took that stance of, "I've tried everything I can. This is what it is." Oof. And a few of them are not here today to talk about it. Really? Yeah, because mm. they everybody's struggling. Yes. And we're all looking for one thing. And that is our rightful identity right. in Christ. Um, and so I do think it's not a time to step back and say, well, I've done it all. I can't make him go to counseling. I can't do this. I can't, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that's a lie from the enemy that it's too late. It is. It is. And a lot of parents believe that mm -hmm. it's too late. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's not. There's help out there. Right. Um, yep. Um and so in this journey that I am on, I, again, became angry and I pushed Devin away um, just with the cold attitude. And um, the Lord <laughs> thumps me on the head often. And he's in all of this. I'm thinking, wow, this is all about Devin. The Lord is working on Devin. He's, he's you know, <laughs> growing him up. Well, it is a much, as much about me mm -hmm. as a daughter of the king as it is about Devin. God does all things well. He is working in all things, and he wastes nothing. Mm -hmm. So in all this, I have received revelation that I am still being refined, mm -hmm. and God is using my son and circumstances to do that. That's tough. Um, Parenting is still hard work. Yes, I'm being refined. Yes, I can make it all sound beautiful. Right. But parenting is tough. Mm -hmm. And um, ultimately, though, I can fall back on this. Our kids are responsible to work out their own salvation. Okay, so that's a big leap. I've gone from saying that we need to remain in their lives and, and pray for them and help guide them but ultimately, they will make decisions, mm -hmm. and um, they are responsible for those decisions. Mike told me um, last week, he said, you have to remember he's writing out his testimony. That's right. And We did. I think of that all mm -hmm. the time now mm -hmm. from a perspective of the future. He's writing out his testimony. I wouldn't be who I am without my personal testimony. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times it opens the door for your calling. Um, Absolutely, that's good. And I know a quote Mike says all the time, to be trusted where you once failed the Lord the most. <laughs> um, I'm trusted in one of those places where I once failed the Lord the most. And so I oh. do think that there's, there's definitely beauty from ashes 
but I think this is the hardest part of parenting to date is to know I can't do it for them. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, everything I say and do mm -hmm. falls short of them choosing for themselves. This is what I want. And I think mm. it's just hard. It's mm -hmm. hard for a, a mom mm -hmm. to have to let go of the reins on ultimately it's his decision. Mm -hmm. His decision to choose Christ. His decision to choose truth. To choose, to choose life. It's, it, I can't make it for him. Right. And when we get to that place that we realize it is his decision, that frees us up again to be the women that God is calling us to be. Right. We're still parents, but it frees us up to um, shirk off, shake off the uh, feelings that the, the things that our kids do, the things the world sees our kids do. It's not... Mm -hmm. A reflection of us. I know. It's not. But that's what the enemy tells you. <laughs> and that's what people will tell right. you as well. Mm -hmm. And I, we just want to tell you that is not your identity. Mm -hmm. Your identity is not the mistakes that your children are currently making or that they have made or that they will make. Right. Um, it, we're just going to free you up from that right now yeah. because I think you and I are both finding that place, mm -hmm. finding that um, comfortable place yeah. in, in Christ right now. Is it comfortable? No, it's not <laughs> comfortable. <laughs> we're finding the place. <laughs> we're finding the place that, that... It's a tough cushion to sit on, but it we're is, finding it. It is. It's, and, but because it is a tough cushion, it keeps us constantly at the feet of That's Jesus. Right. right? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. good. So, um, gosh, I've flipped the page. I don't even know if I'm ready to flip the page yet. I guess I am. So, um, having said that, that our kids have to um, navigate for themselves mm -hmm. in a lot of areas when they reach a certain age, um, I just want to remind everybody, and you and I too, that the number of broken people in the Bible who learn to walk in dependency upon the Lord, the number of broken people in the Bible. Um, I think that was everybody. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it seems um, like only broken people, um, only a broken person is fit for leadership in the kingdom of God. Amen. And so we have to... <clears throat> We've experienced those broken places, and we have to be willing to trust the Father enough to let our kids experience um, some of those broken places as well mm -hmm. so that they too can learn to trust in Jesus. So please don't um, recoil from what we just said that about, about letting, trusting the Lord. Right. Um, don't buy into today's popular prosperity gospel. And what I mean by that is um, that prosperity gospel, the teaching of so many falls short of the true riches that God has for all who are in Christ. Mm -hmm. He is the refiner. He allows us to walk through the refiner's fire. It is a process. Yeah. It is a journey from the day you accept Jesus as your Savior until the day that we will meet Him face to face. It yeah. is a journey of refinement and becoming like Christ. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to deny our children right. that blessing. Mm -hmm. um, so... Back to the first, when I said that when you have a marriage problem, you seek marriage help. You seek right. a book about marriage. So I want to go back to, I began to see presenting factors um, with my son. And so instead of just fixing the symptoms, um, I want to point out that in this place where, where my son is, this awkward teenage place, um, he is easily distracted. He is easily deceived um, by the things of this world because he is seeking, he is searching for his identity. Mm -hmm. Who is he? And um, our job as parents is to, and the church, mm -hmm. the, our job as the church is to teach them in work and deed 
who they are in Christ. Mm -hmm. So we are called only to plant the seed. Mm -hmm. God waters and reaps the harvest. So as our kids, as we notice these presenting problems, always be mindful that there is a deeper issue going on with our kids. In a world that is trying to steal their identity, they are searching and we must point them to Jesus yeah. in everything. Um, are they filling a void with an addiction? Um, yes, they are. That void can be filled and should be filled by a relationship with Jesus. Right. So um, the ultimate solution, the ultimate um, remedy is relationship with Jesus mm -hmm. so that they come to find their identity. Yeah. So we want to encourage you to stay involved with your children, even if it seems hopeless, even if you just want to throw your hands up and say, go on and do whatever. Please don't. Reach out for um, other women who may be going through this, who may be further along than you, and, and find out what they've done to survive um, <laughs> and thrive. Mm -hmm. um, seek help. Um, I want to point out this book, too, by Stormy O'Martian, The Power of a Praying Parent. It's, it's great. The Word. Stay in the Word. Read yeah. the... Read the promises of God over your children. Pray the word over your Pray children. Pray the word over your children. Yeah. Even when you hug them. Yeah. They don't have to know why you're hugging they so long. They don't have to know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. So thank you again for joining us, and um, we'll see you next time. <laughs>